the cloud security essentials training courses we will cover five very important uh, uh, sections number one some concepts and design requirements for your cloud infrastructure uh, then we will have a look on the data security and we will concentrate on the data security only. Then we will have the uh, approach for the cloud infrastructure and platform uh, security. Uh, in module number four, we will cover the application security and finally the operation security. As you can see, all these components which are representing the uh, cloud infrastructure as overall or cloud solution as overall. Okay, uh, please feel free to ask any time. And even gentlemen, sometimes if I am uh, uh, explaining uh, and uh, I really appreciate if you have any questions, then please send it to me in the chat. If you have any questions, send it to me in the chat. This it will be the best way uh, where I can have a look on all the questions and answer these uh, questions. Uh, sometimes I may answer the question immediately or I have to wait till I finish the slide, then I will uh, be able to answer the question. Then if you have any question, please uh, type your question in the uh, chat. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we can uh, share our uh, experience uh, together. This is, will be very uh, important. Uh, training evaluation, it's very important for both of us. After we finish the training, after in, on uh, Thursday, I will send you a URL for evaluating the course. And this it will be very important also because the attendance certificate for this course, uh, you will not receive it until you send me the evaluation form. Uh, I am repeating again. You will not receive the attendance certificate if you did not send me the training evaluation form. This is number one. Number two, you have to attend the three sessions with us. You have to attend the three sessions with us. And the uh, attendance uh, record, it will be taken randomly at any time, at any time during the two hours. And yani suddenly you will find that I'm telling you, gentlemen, thank you. Please hold on for a few seconds. I will make a screenshot for all the attendees. Then this it will be considered the uh, attendance uh, record for us. When uh, after that, when you will come, oh, I attend, and uh, but during this period, I was not there or whatever. I am really sorry. This is not uh, be considered. Then I uh, I will take the attendance record randomly at any moment. I will stop the session and I will capture the screenshot for all that in this. And uh, this, it will be used beside the evaluation form to receive your certificate. We will uh, record uh, video and uh, this recording, it will be uploaded into our YouTube channel. And I really appreciate if you can subscribe in the YouTube channel, because this means that you will be uh, updated with all the uh, data uh, and the uh, videos and the information which we uploaded. Uh, and of course, as we mentioned before, you can contact me uh, offline for any help or clarification. And again, as I mentioned, please, if you have any question, you can uh, write your question on the uh, chat. I will uh, read it and I will answer it as well. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, time, it will not be enough for we uh, introduce ourselves because we are uh, run out of time. Then I will uh, send you another uh, question. Uh, and I hope that you will uh, uh, send me the uh, reply uh, over the polling question. But please, I really appreciate if all of you, you ca uh, can share. 
because this is very important. I want to understand your background in the security when I will be able to uh, arrange this course in a proper way. I have submitted my answer. Thank you. Submit your answer, sir. I have submitted my answer, sir. Thank you. I have submitted my answer. Okay, I will end. We, we will uh, share the uh, polling results. We have three persons which we have experience in the IT security field. And two persons, we don't have security field and four persons new to the field. Okay, I think uh, my friends, these who are uh, new to the field and who are, uh, we don't have any security experience in the field, this it will be very important that we have to attend other courses for security principles and basics. Security principles and basics, because uh, we will cover uh, some security principles and basics here, but of course we will cover it uh, 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 very uh, quickly because these courses, uh, I have a limited time, uh, but of course it would be very important if you be able to attend some security basics and concepts, we will have uh, next, uh, uh, next quarter uh, two courses, one for free and one for uh, uh, with these. The free course, it's called Security Basics and Concepts. This it will be very important. And I want all of you, even if you have the experience, enough experience, I want you still to attend this course. This it will be very helpful. It will give you new information, or at least it will uh, help you to uh, refresh your information. The second course, it will be Security Plus. It will allow you to uh, attend for the Security uh, Plus training course from CompTIA and visit its well recognized certificate in the market. Uh, I will try to do my best to make the concepts very free, uh, easy and uh, clear. And this, as we mentioned, this information, it will be available for uh, your data center or uh, even the cloud infrastructure. Okay, our training course, it will consist of two hours uh, for three days. It will be on Sunday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. We will split one hour into uh, two sessions, uh, 50 minutes for as a session, and we will take 10 minutes break. I am afraid that today uh, we uh, lost first uh, hour and we did not start yet. But anyway, uh, we, we, we made some uh, clarification and uh, we know uh, each other uh, in uh, a proper way. Uh, we will try to compensate this time in the next session and in the next few days, inshallah. Uh, we will start our course by the IT security basics and concepts. These are the IT security basics and concepts, and this is module number one. Okay. First concept here, it's the least privilege least privilege. What is the least privilege? 
Do you know what is the least privileged concept? Uh, minimum, uh, minimum advantage or minimum rights you have, maybe. Okay, good answer. Uh, what else? Give the users in your organization the least privilege based on the role. Uh, can you raise your voice, please? Based on the role of the employee in your organization. Okay. The privilege will be fixed, which means like if there are 10 places where they can have a privileged access, but based on the role, if they are allowed only two, then they'll be given only two. Okay, that's good. Uh, as a reminder, if you have a note or if you have any question, please write it in the chat. I will, uh, I'm opening the chat and I will read whatever you will send. Uh, least privilege, as uh, your colleagues mentioned now, this it will be the minimum rights or authorizations or permissions which you required to do your uh, work. For example, if I am working in operations team, uh, if you need, if you are working in the uh, operation team, then this means that you need to have, to have the uh, access to the program uh, help desk, for example, uh, email, and so on. Then these are the list of privilege you have to provide the user the minimum rights or minimum authorizations for services and applications to perform their daily operations. Don't give them any other privilege which it exceeds their needs and requirements because this it can be considered as a risk. It can be, you know what, what's going in, in, in the usual uh, situation. Today we are uh, uh, working in, uh, for example, support uh, or operations team. When I have the access rights for all the application related to the operations team, after six months, I got a promotion and I uh, handled uh, a different uh, department. It may be instant uh, response team, for example. Then, according to my new rule, I have the new position rights and permission to access the applications. But if I be a security administrator, he is not professional enough to understand that this it can create a risk because I still have the permissions for the operations team. Unfortunately, after some time, we will forget that these permissions are valid for me. And after some time, maybe one, two, three years, you will find that all the permissions are accumulated and all these permissions, it will be uh, uh, still reside on your account. Then if there is any hacker, he was able to access your account, then this means that he will be able to manage all these applications and services, and this it will be a real problem. The second concept, it is the uh, defense in depth. What is defense in depth? Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I, I, I'm really sorry, I cannot pronounce the name, but uh, I think Bod, uh, uh, Bod uh, unfortunately, Bod, uh, I don't have uh, uh, any sessions for the uh, applications uh, security. Uh, I am working on data and network security and uh, cloud security. Uh, application security, if it's not my uh, specialization, then I'm really sorry, we will not be able to provide the uh, session uh, on Linux operating system. Okay, the defense in depth. Defense in depth, this another concept, which it will make the uh, infrastructure more secure. What do we mean? We mean that we don't want to have a single level of protection. I want to have a multiple level of protection. For example, as you can see here, we have here the data. It is hosting in this uh, 
maybe a server, maybe a storage, whatever. Then we have the users, and these users are uh, defined in the Active Directory. Then you will find the application security. Then this is considered the, uh, def the security or uh, defense number one, layer number one. We have application security. It may be encryption. It may be uh, uh, we are checking the uh, type of inputs on the application. Then we can avoid any injection or whatever, whatever the type of the application security. And the second level, it will be endpoint security. The endpoint security, this it will be security which it will be installed on your desktop. You may have a firewall, you may have uh, security uh, malware uh, protection, uh, antivirus, uh, you may have some uh, whitelist applications, then uh, you cannot uh, you cannot run whatever any applications which are not allowed on your machines. There are a lot of endpoint security uh, pieces which it can be installed and can provide uh, security on your uh, level. Uh, then you will find the network security. This network security, it can be uh, IBS, it can be firewall, uh, it can be encryption where the data, it can be moved uh, encrypted all over the uh, data, and uh, or I mean over the network. Uh, and so on. Then finally, the perimeter uh, security. Perimeter security, this it can be uh, a firewall, uh, external and internal firewall, which it create what we call DMZ in between the two firewalls, for example. Uh, it can be also uh, a strong uh, access control uh, for authentication, authorization, and so on. Then as you can see now, we have a multiple of uh, security levels, uh, multiple security levels. When if there is any hacker, he is coming from the internet and he is trying to penetrate your network. First of all, he will find level number one. He will find the perimeter security. He will find the external firewall and the DMZ firewall uh, until he can reach to the network. And even if he can pass the two firewalls in this level, he will reach to the network security. Network security he may have, as we mentioned, IBS, he may have uh, encryption, then the data he will not be able to see it, uh, and so on. Even if he passed, then he will come to the level of the endpoint security. Again, this another level which it will protect the application. When this means that you are trying to make life very difficult for the uh, hacker. It's not a single firewall or single device. If he was able to uh, compromise this device, then he will have the access to the uh, whole network. No, this it will be only a single uh, uh, multiple devices, as we mentioned here. For example, in the perimeter uh, security, it may be. To, uh, two firewalls uh, plus other devices. In the network security, we have encryption and we have uh, IBS. Then we have another two firewall. In the endpoint security, we may have another uh, two or three pieces of software which are installed on the uh, desktop. The application security controls, as we would see, you may have XML firewalls. You can have application firewalls. It may be two or three. Uh, controls and so on. Well, this means that if you have a hacker, he is coming from the internet, you have to pass uh, two plus two, four plus two, six plus three. He has to pass nine, nine security controls. And I don't think this is uh, something easy. Why? Although the hackers are very smart and the hacking tools uh, is very easy to be utilized right now and use, uh, used even by non-expertise. Uh, but again, if you are a good administ security administrator, then 
you have to configure if any of these uh, controls which you have it, uh, uh, it's compromised or someone will try to compromise these devices, it should send you immediately an alert. And these alerts, it should not be a log or whatever. This, it should be SMS or email or whatever, something which you have to check it immediately to know that there is a problem. Then if I can understand that there is someone who is trying to penetrate the perimeter security firewall or DMZ firewall, then this means that I have to stop him immediately and I will not allow him to access my uh, infrastructure. Any questions? No, it's pretty much clear. Thank you for the deep information. Okay, great. The CIA triad. CIA triad, my friends, this is the basic of security. When we're saying security, what does it mean? It, it means CIA. C stands for confidentiality. It stands for confidentiality. I stands for integrity and availability. Uh, what is confidentiality? Any, any, any idea? Confidentiality means the data uh, which you have in your systems should be secure. Your password should not be breached. Uh, your systems, uh, your system data also should not be breached to anyone to the outer world. Uh, that that should be a sort of security conf confidentiality. Sorry. Okay, confidentiality in very simple. Uh, uh, definition that allow authorized persons to access the data. So simple like that. Allow only authorized persons to access the data. The integrity allow only authorized persons to make changes to the data. Allow only authorized persons to make changes do we data. Availability, I think we know it that services and data, it should be available to, uh, 24 by seven for authorized persons. These are the basic definitions of CIA. And as I mentioned, when we mention security, even when you will work with sophisticated course, when we say, for example, in risk management, what are the threats threaten the assets? We will speak about the security. And when we say security, immediately we'll say, what are the threats which it will threaten the confidentiality, integrity, and availability? Confidentiality again, it is the allowing only authorized person to access data. Integrity allowing only authorized person to make changes to the uh, data and availability that the data, it should be available uh, 24 by seven for all the users. Or authorized users, of course, yeah. Okay. Got it, thank you. Cryptography, what is cryptography? Cryptography, I think you are familiar with cryptography. All of us know the cryptography. And this cryptography, it is the science of encryption data or changing data from, from one form into other form, from the clear text into cipher text, from clear text into cipher text. And in cryptography, it depends upon two major things. What are these things which we call it? Algorithm and a key. Algorithm and a key. In cloud, gentlemen, in cloud, my friends, you have to understand that the uh, uh, encryption or cryptography it is very important. It's very, very, very important. Why? Because we in, 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 in cloud, we don't have the rights to make whatever any security controls as we are able to do it in our data centers. And in the cloud, we have to protect our data. We have to encrypt it. 
no one he will be able to see it except the authorized ones who have the key. Then it's very important that you will be familiar with the encryption. And this is the reason why I am saying that you have to be familiar with some basics and concepts with the clouds. You have to be familiar with some basic and concepts, especially the encryption. How can you encrypt the data? How you can manage the keys and so on? And this, we will have some future courses in the next quarter, uh, inshallah. And I hope to see all of you in these courses. Okay, certificates. I'm quite sure that a lot of us heard about certificates. What is certificate? Okay, can you tell me what is the certificate? Any answer? Uh, for yeah, using some some uh, user mm -hmm. information, we require certificates. Sorry for doing what? Can you raise your voice, please? A certificate is the application note for the task being done or achieved. Okay. Any other answer? Uh, authentication of any quality or any duties that we perform. Okay, any other answer? Certificate means uh, there's something uh, some uh, like if you want to use a, 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 a website, it requires some security certificates. So, so, so these certificates should be able to protect that particular website. So this is the question mainly. Okay. I As think I have another answer. Sure, please go ahead. Uh, it's written as uh, in the images already as a qualified, this person is qualified to do something. So we can say that if there is an application have taken a specific certificate, it means that this uh, application is uh, uh, has passed all the qual qualifications that can be done for that. Okay. Uh, okay, again, uh, my friends, I will repeat what did I say, and please uh, don't take it uh, personally. Uh, it's very important to understand the concepts. It is very important to understand the concepts. If you want to work in the security field while the concepts are not clear, then you will be in trouble here. Because now, for example, the, all the definitions which I heard about certificates, it's not the right description. It is so simple to, to tell you certificates, it is something which identify a person. So simple like that. Why? Are you aware about the uh, public and the private keys? Public and the private keys, these are the concept behind the certificates. What is it? If we want to make encryption, we want to make authentication, we want to make authorization, we want to make data confidentiality, we want to make data integrity, we want to make anything, we need to have a key. Usually we start with something called shared key. This shared key, it's one key, and this key, it will be available with all of us. Yani, suppose that I want to send to uh, one, uh, one of you uh, a, a, an encrypted message. And I want to say, I want to send for Bankash, for example. I want to send for Bankash uh, this uh, 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 certain, uh, what we can say, encrypted message. Okay, when I have the key and he has the key, I will make the encryption with the key and when he will receive this encrypted message, he will use the same key, then he will be able to decrypt the message. Then this means that the encryption, it will be done by single key. The encryption, it will be done by a single key. And this single key, it will be able to uh, encrypt and decrypt the message. 
here we are call it shared key. Okay, I am moving no, sorry. step by step. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have any question? Okay, we are, I am trying to move step by step till we reach what is the meaning of the certificate. I am trying to explain you the concept behind the certificate. Then first type of key is the shared secret key, shared secret key. But this key, we have a problem with it. Why? Because if I want to send uh, encrypted message to bank cash, then it's okay. I can uh, share the key with him. I can share it through email or I can visit him in home and give it on uh, USB or whatever the way which I will share the key with him. But now, uh, Bangash, he told me, uh, Osama, uh, please, can we uh, include our friend uh, uh, Rehab, for example, in uh, the message encryption messages? Okay, no problem. We can include her, of course. Then we have to give her the key. But unfortunately, we don't have a relation with Rehab Dial. She may be a uh, resident in a different city or country. Then but there is no way we have to share this key with her. She must have the key in her hand. Then she will be able to encrypt and decrypt the messages which she wants to send it to us or the messages which she received from us. Then this means that we found that for this method of keys, that the uh, 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 distribution method of keys, it's not easy. Why? Because if this key, I sent it to have an email and there is someone, he captured this email, or I sent it to her in uh, uploaded on box.com or OneDrive or whatever, and there is any uh, hacker or by any way this, uh, this key, it was shared and the, the hacker or cracker he was able to capture it, then this means that all our uh, uh, encryption mails, it will be decrypted and the hackers will be able to read it. And also he will can generate some uh, encrypted keys and he can spoof uh, these messages. And he, I can uh, receive a message from Bankage and it's already Bankage email, it's, it's mentioned in the email and it's encrypted with the same secret key. But uh, actually it's a hacker, he captured the key and he makes spoofing for the email address. And in this case, I was not able to uh, notify or to know that the key it was leaked and uh, the hacker he is uh, capture all this information uh, from us. Then, what is the point now? What we can do? We said, okay, then to have a shared secret key, this is not easy. Okay, it's not easy. Then what is what is the alternative? The alternative to have something called another concept. It will be another concept, which we call it public key and the private key. Public key and the private key. This another concept, uh, my friends. It's not a shared key. It's a public key and the private key. To make life very easy, because I don't want to go in details, this it will be covered in Security Plus and Security Basics and Concepts in uh, next quarter, inshallah. You will have one key. It can encrypt the data, and the other key, it can decrypt the data. One key, public, it can encrypt data, and private, it can decrypt data. OK? And we mentioned that, OK, it's very simple. Private key, it is your key. Private key, it's your key. This means that now we have three in our group, Osama, Bankash, and Rehab. And each one of us, we want to share encrypted messages. Then each one of us, he will create for himself public key and private key. And these two keys are related to each other. Public key and private key for the hub related to each other. Public key and the private key for bankage we are related to each other, and so on. Then the private key it will be secret with you. No one he should take it. Don't give your private key to anyone because if the private key is leaked 
or stolen when this means that your data it's not secure you have to revoke this key you have to revoke this key okay then as we mentioned that one key public key it will encrypt the data and when you receive the data uh, encrypted, I received a message from Rehab, I will, I will use my private key and I will decrypt her message when I will be able to read it. Now we are insecure. And as we mentioned, private key, it's your key, no one he should take it. And the private key, uh, sorry, the public key, it's open. Anyone can have it. It's not an issue at all. Anyone he can use it. Yani, uh, for example, Rehab, she can send it to Samir. Yes, she can send it to Samir. It's a public, it's available over the internet. I don't care, I don't have any problem. Okay, great. But till this moment, we did not reach to the certificates. You explained a very long story, but I did not understand the role of the certificate yet. Okay, be patient. We will reach to the point of the certificate. Now, as we mentioned, Osama, he have a public and a private. Rehab, she has a public and a private. Pankash have public and a private. And after some time, we, all of us in IT certificates, we want to send the encrypted data to each other. Then uh, we have now 11 trainees joined the trading and we want to uh, exchange uh, private data together. What is the problem? You know what is the problem? The problem to share this uh, key. As we mentioned, I want to send a Pankash message. I have to have his public key. Okay, but how can I prove that this is a public key for Pankash? I am afraid there is a hacker, he is smart, and he will create his public key and give it to me and tell me this is the key for Pankash. He is spoofing Pankash identity, although he is not Pankash then how can I make sure that this public key it's really for the bank cash and this public key it's really for the hype and this public key it's really for Samir and this public key it's really for Osama and so on. How we can do this exercise? Uh -huh. Here we will come to the concept of the CA. CA, what is CA? CA it is V. Uh, uh, certificate Authority. C A Certificate Authority. What is Certificate Authority? Certificate Authority, it is a well-known, uh, recognized uh, organization uh, as trust more or uh, whatever. We have a lot of uh, uh, CA and this CA, what we are doing when any one of us he will create his public key and the private key, they will send the public key to the CA. The CA, he will tell him, Prove your identity. I am telling him, I am Osama. Are you really Osama? Yes. I swear by God, I am Osama. No, no, thank you very much. I, I don't believe it. Please send me your passport copy and send me your ID copy, and send me some more information. Then they will make sure that this is really, really Osama. Then they will take this public key and they will stamp it by a, by a specific key or by a specific stamp from this CA. This document, which stamp my public key, it is called certificate. Then the certificate, it's very simple as a public key for my identity. And when I receive this certificate from any CA as Baltimore or Baltimore or whatever, then this it's really uh, or, uh, well identified uh, certificate because I know that this companies be doing their exercise in a professional way and they will never issue any certificate until they make sure that this person he is really the one who claim he is 
Is it she is Rahab? Yes, she is Rahab. He is bankers. Yes, he is bankers. Then there is no need to do any other exercises to make sure that these are the real uh, uh, public keys, which I will use it later in the encryption, encryption of functionality, integrity, and so on. This is the history behind the concept. Although we uh, lost 20 minutes in this uh, simple definition, but uh, it's not an issue if you uh, really got the idea behind the, uh, the, 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 the uh, certificate meaning. Any questions? Uh, before any questions, uh, is it the concept of certificate, is it clear right now? So yes, who share the, their feedback with me? Uh, Bankash, uh, Rahab, Samir. Uh, do you think now the certificate concept is clear? Yes, it is pretty much. Yeah, so clear. it's quite clear. It's quite deep down clear now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Excellent. And this is our target. As we mentioned, we want to make the concepts of the security very easy. And as I told you, gentlemen, security concepts, it's very easy, very easy. But we want to take everything from scratch and to understand the concepts and with what we are looking for in IT certificates. Okay. Uh, physical security, I think this concept is very easy. Physical security, it's, although it's very important, but it's very easy. Why? Because physical security, this is provide the security for the physical devices, for the data centers. I need sensors, I need uh, lights, I need CCTV, I need uh, AC, I need uh, uh, security guards, and so on. Because now if I am a hacker and I want to take an access on your machine uh, through the internet, this will be somehow uh, difficult. And I have to do a lot of exercises as reconnaissance and a lot of other exercises, food printing, understand what you are doing, what are the open boards and this is size can take hours and it can reach up to weeks and months till I can be able to penetrate your server. But just imagine if I have a direct access to your machine, yani if I have a direct access to your switch or a firewall, then this very simply I can connect a console board to your uh, firewall or a switch or whatever and collect all the info. And this is why we are saying that the physical security is an important issue and we have to take it in our consideration. Okay, risk management. I don't know if uh, some of you here attend with us the risk management uh, session last week. Uh, risk management, this from my point of view, I consider it as the backbone of security of data security, backbone of data security. If you are working in data security and you are not familiar with risk management, then you have to think about this uh, again. Uh, risk management, it's very important because the risk management, this it will give you the direction and uh, how to identify uh, analysis the risks and how your organization it can uh, deal and mitigate these uh, risks. Uh, one of the uh, main problem uh, in the market now, uh, my friends, is that you may, uh, some of your consultant, you will come and you will tell him, I want to protect my uh, network. Then he will tell you, yes, yes, we have a great solutions. You can have mail firewall, you can have uh, internal firewall, external firewall, IBS, VBN, VBN, SSL, device, you can have antivirus and he will put all the security possible solutions in front of you and he will give you the impression that all these components are very important and without these um, uh, components, you will be in a trouble. 
in my, one of my uh, scenarios with our customers, uh, when I visited the customer and he mentioned his requirements, I discovered that he has only uh, all his applications are hosted in a uh, third party uh, company. Uh, it was a managed services when his servers and application hosted in a different location and he has no data centers. He have only one uh, uh, desktops in the uh, head office and he want to access the data. Then this man, he does not want firewalls. He does not want anything like that. Just he want to initiate a VPN secure connection uh, to the, uh, uh, the data center where it is hosted outside. Then all what he need VPN SSL device, it will cost him maybe 50K. Uh, uh, Saudi Riyadh, and this it will be a great solution for him. I mean, if I want to sell him firewalls, IBS, VBN, uh, so and so, then this means that it's a waste of uh, money and waste of operations and resources. And of course, we were able to discover his real uh, uh, requirements because we did very quick risk management and uh, risk assessment while we are sitting in front of him. We understood what are his assets, what are the vulnerabilities, what are the threats, what are the uh, risks. And we uh, are able to figure out the controls immediately, which are very suitable for him. Then again, my advice, it's very important to go through the risk management and have uh, some understand about it. This is considered a backbone for uh, uh, security infrastructure. The business continuity. This is continuity, this another concept which you will hear about it related with the disaster recovery. Business continuity, this it will provide your organization the ability to continue the operations in cases of failure. This failure, it can be uh, ranges from very simple uh, failure as a power supply failure or uh, one component failure as a switch or whatever, till you can reach to the uh, high-end devices failure as a core switches. Uh, business continuity, it can, have the concept that your business is up and running. Even in some situation, uh, if you are saying, okay, my data center is down in business continuity, they are caring, they are not care, I don't care. Okay, and as business continuity, and I want to continue my operation. Then I will let my team or the staff to go back to use the uh, notebooks and papers, then they will be able to do their uh, work uh, manually until the network is up and uh, uh, running. Or in the business continuity, we can have the concept of disaster recovery, that if you have a disaster, a flood or rains or uh, volcanoes or earthquakes or whatever, then you can be able to fill over your services for, from one location to another location. In in this case, you will be able to handle all these uh, services to different locations, then you will be able to access these locations uh, later. Uh, I think now it's 8.30 and uh, we still have only 30 minutes for the uh, end of the session, uh, but I need, uh, if you don't mind, 10 minutes uh, as a break and uh, we will uh, continue after uh, that session. Then uh, see you after 10 minutes. Any questions before uh, disconnecting? Okay. Uh, in the uh, first session, we covered some uh, concepts for the uh, security in uh, general. Uh, if you don't mind, just I will break now for the uh, uh, attendance. I have now uh, Bodor, DV, uh, Faisal, Muhammad. Uh, what which Muhammad? Because Muhammad, I have multiple Muhammad. With what Muhammad? Which Muhammad? Muhammad what? Uh, Nasr, uh, 
Nigel, Pankaj, Rehab, Samir. Okay, when these are we uh, who are attending right now? Yes, sir, we are, on the class. we are in the class. I am uh, sorry for uh, this delay, but I am trying to uh, have the uh, I have uh, Bodor, uh, Diva, Faisal, Nasr Amrawi, Nigel, Pankash, Rehab, uh, Samir. These are the, uh, these are the, the, what we can say, the, uh, the attendance record for today. Okay, uh, do we have any questions uh, regarding the uh, session? As of, now, as of now, is it pretty much clear, sir? Okay, great. Okay, but now what we will uh, uh, cover, uh, we will have uh, other uh, group of concepts, which are again, uh, very uh, important. And uh, I want to concentrate on this uh, as well, because this it will help you uh, very well in uh, your uh, uh, security uh, backgrounds. These are the concepts and design requirements, architectural concepts and design requirements. Of course, don't forget that we are explaining what we cloud. Now we are explaining the cloud. I did not uh, go in detail for the on-site uh, data centers. We will go through mainly the cloud. Then we will cover some concepts. You know, this is very module. Before this, it was an introduction. Unfortunately, we uh, lost a uh, long time. Yani at least we had to finish this module uh, today, but uh, I don't care. Uh, as soon as uh, you are uh, understanding and you feel benefit out of this course, this is our uh, target. Uh, in module number one, we will cover the uh, cloud computing, the cloud services, the security concepts, some security concepts related to cloud computing, design principles, and uh, some of other very interested modules. This is a very important module, uh, my friends. This, it will highlight and covers a lot of uh, concepts behind the cloud, and you will be able to understand what does cloud mean, uh, what are the different uh, services, what are the cloud services, uh, be, uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, SaaS, NAS, and so on. All these expressions which we hear about them, we will go through this in very uh, clear definitions and we will understand it in a proper way. Let's start with very basic definition. What about the cloud? What is the cloud? What is the cloud? Okay, as you can see the cloud, and I want you to concentrate on this because we will get some uh, uh, what we can say, uh, characteristics from this definition about the cloud. Cloud computing is a model of enable 
on-demand network access to shared pool of configurable computer resources that can be rapidly professional and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. This is the definition of the cloud. Very simply, very simply, we can say that the cloud, it's a group of resources, shared pool of resources. What do we mean by shared pool of resources? Group of processors, memory, storage, uh, and so on. And all these resources are on demand. They are uh, uh, enabled on demand for on demand network access. It can be accessed on demand. What do we mean again? I can access it at any time I require through uh, desktop, through server, through mobile, through whatever the method which you want to access these resources. And it can be rapidly professional. What do we mean by rapidly professional? Rapidly professional, this is one of the main characteristics of the cloud. This means that if I want to have, uh, uh, make a server or install a server on the cloud, there is no need for any steps rather than connect to the browser uh, for the management tool of the cloud service provider. Say I want to have a server, this server uh, in some uh, cloud service providers like Amazon or Google, they will provide you uh, pre-configured uh, servers. It will tell you this server 4 GB RAM, uh, one terabyte hard disk, so on, so uh, five uh, core processors, or or whatever any other configuration or you can do your server on your own when there is no need for interaction with the cloud service provider administrator uh, you can uh, connect to their network you can configure your server and within few minutes you can have your uh, server it's up and running and you can install all your applications on it when this is what we call it rapidly provision then Minimal uh, management efforts because we don't need any management efforts. I don't need anything. All the configuration which you want to configure, it's very easy to be configured. You can define the server, you can define whatever, any other uh, tools. It's not only server, it can be server, it can be other uh, piece of software or application or uh, device on the network as, uh, for example, uh, redundancy uh, uh, server or uh, load balancer for multiple servers and so on. Then from this definition, we want to conclude the features and characteristics of the cloud. Number one, it's on-demand network. Number one, it's on-demand network. This is very important. It's on-demand network access. When this it can be accessed at any time from any device. And the, the, the uh, beauty here that this it can be uh, accessed from any uh, platform. It's maybe mobile, it can be tablet, it can be desktop, it can be Apple, it can be iOS, it can be Mac, whatever it is. Also, they are group of shared uh, shared pools, group uh, shared pool of config uh, of resources. This is very important. Shared pool of resources, and this makes sense. We have group of shared uh, pools. It can be uh, processors, uh, networks, uh, hard disks, uh, storage, uh, load balancers. Uh, whatever the, the, the resources which you can uh, have some of these uh, resources together and you can uh, configure it in the form of a server or a service or whatever. Then just number two, resource shared pool of resources. Then number one, on-demand network. Number two, shared pool resources. Number three, rapidly profession as we explained it. Uh, before this characteristic number uh, three, and finally management effort, uh, minimal management effort, and this is management effort even from the user or from the cloud service provider. Cloud service provider in some situation is transparent for him. The user, he can log into the management uh, tool and he can start to create 
the server and uh, create the services he require and he will be able to utilize it. And this is transparent for the cloud service provider. Uh, as you can see, this uh, definition, it's very rich and it provides us with a lot of information and characteristics of the cloud computing definition. Okay. We have some concepts here. And uh, again, I think we have to go through these concepts very quickly. Uh, and these concepts, uh, it's not as the one which we discussed before. The one which we discussed before, it was related to the IT security in general, but here these are uh, cloud computing concepts. These are cloud computing concepts. Number one, what is the cloud application? Cloud application, it's any application running on cloud any application running on cloud. It can be, uh, for example, uh, can you give me an example of cloud application you know it? Oracle systems. Sorry? Oracle systems, Viogen and the other uh, HR application. Uh, Oracle uh, systems? Yes. Okay, Oracle, okay, but do you know any other uh, application? Uh, Oracle, yes, we know that we, we have their own uh, cloud infrastructure right now. Uh, Rehab, uh, she mentioned Office uh, 365, great, excellent. Yes, Office 365, I think this is a popular uh, example. Of us, all of us uh, know it. Uh, what about the... Uh, G Suite, uh, Salesforce. Salesforce, excellent. Salesforce, one of the CRM applications which are very popular and uh, it's used in a lot of uh, situations. Yes, uh, this is another uh, cloud application. Great. These are the uh, cloud uh, application examples. Number two, cloud application portability. When you hear the portability expression, you have to get two different concepts. Number one, that any cloud application, it can be moved from one cloud service provider to another cloud service provider. There is a, a very important uh, concept or uh, expression. You will hear about it. It's called lock in or locked in. Lock in or locked in that you are locked with a specific ISB, a cloud service provider. Sorry, what do you mean? For example, now, there is a cloud service provider. He said that I will provide you uh, a new CRM tool. You will say, hey, I, I know that Salesforce, we have a, a good CRM tools and I can utilize it. Wait, CRM is very expensive. This it will cost you, for example, uh, I don't know, say 1,000K, uh, we will not, uh, we will only cost you 50% uh, of the overall cost of Salesforce. Then you will be very happy and you will go buy for him and you will feel that you save some money for your organization. But actually, this is not a right decision because this cloud service provider, he may use some specific or appropriate uh, applications, services, uh, libraries, or whatever. And these uh, applications are uh, appropriate and they are dedicated only for this cloud service provider. He has his own uh, developers and they made this uh, service and application. They may make these things because they want to make life easy. They want to provide you a very fast response and so on when they make their proprietary uh, 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 services. But by the end of the day, you are locked in. Why? Because now after you work with them for one or two or three years, you will tell him, oh, I'm really sorry. We have to move to the sales force because in, uh, we have a lot of our partners and vendors We are using sales folks and we want to be integrated with them as well. But they will tell you, we are really sorry. You will not be able to uh, export your data from the, uh, our infrastructure to sales folks. It's not compatible. Oh, it's not compatible, then what can I do? Well, we don't know. We are not able to uh, export the data. It's not compatible with Salesforce. Then this means that you are locked in with this cloud service provider. You are not able to move here or there, and you have to go through with this uh, uh, cloud service provider, even if you are not satisfied about his services. 
And this is one of the main issues which you have to take it in your consideration. When you will use any cloud application, it should be have the portability that it can be moved from one, uh, or at least the data, it can be moved from one cloud service provider to another. Today you are using Salesforce, tomorrow you may use another CRM, which it may be XYZ company, which it will provide you more features or it may be standard with your partners and vendors and so on. Then this, which we call it portability. This concept number one. Concept number two, which we call it the uh, moving from one cloud model to another. As we will know later that we have the cloud models, private, public, and community uh, models. These are the models for the pub, uh, cloud implementation. We will know this uh, day after tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, but when we say log in again, this it will be valid for the moving your service uh, hosting from public to private or from pub private to community or from uh, vice versa or whatever it is. Okay. The uh, cloud computing, this is the concept for the computer, cloud computing in general. This, whatever any service you will host it on the uh, cloud. It's uh, make your uh, computing services on the cloud. It can be infrastructure as a service to host uh, infrastructure as servers or devices or platform as a service where you are hosting some applications and development to uh, develop your applications and software or a service as uh, a software as a service where you are hosting some software applications. And the cloud computing this is a general term for the data processing and uh, service uh, hosting on the cloud. Cloud data portability, it's exactly the same as we explained for the cloud application portability, but the cloud application that you are able to move the application itself from one infrastructure to another. Here, cloud data portability that you are moving from the data itself, not the application, the data itself. Then the portability concept is the same, that you are able to move from one cloud service provider to another or from one uh, cloud uh, hosting model to another. Uh, I think now it's 9.03. Uh, we came to the end of the uh, class. Uh, thank you very much for uh,